in india good afternoon good morning to friends in other parts of the world i am murli tumarukudi um, working at the united nations but originally from kerala and uh, today i'm extremely delighted to lead a very distinguished panel of scientists and engineers to talk about education of science in the 21st century before i come to the topic i want to give a bit of background about what we are trying to achieve today all of us sitting in this panel including myself studied in kerala in the public education system and we then went on to various prestigious academic institutions around the world and when we look back at the state of science education in our colleges we find that there are a lot of good practices we can learn so that so that the new generation can also benefit from the best of what is happening around the world and this new online revolution which has just happened right in, the, in front of our eyes how made it easy so we came together and formed a small group called education 21c 21st century and this is originally the brain child of anjana the youngest of our team who then persuaded all of us to come together and form this group and this group is lot more than the five people whom you will see here today then we were supported by many other institutions edumitra being one and um, the tevera sacred heart college has been supporting us and there are number of people in the background whom you will not see today but you can see on our website during the course of this lecture we will initially talk about the role of science education how science education is changing around the world how science is actually taught around the world and how science education is important to engineering but we will also have time to answer your questions about you know getting opportunities to study abroad getting post doctoral fellowship getting funding opportunities and also about teaching methods so without much ado i will now invite the first panelist dr suresh pillai for most malayali suresh actually don't need an introduction suresh is the author of the very famous book called tanmatram but he also has um, two other books called paatham onna and kanigam suresh obtained first rank in msc chemistry from mahatma gandhi university kerala he obtained phd in the area of nanotechnology from trinity college dublin and then performed his post doctoral research at the california institute of technology caltech he has also completed an executive mba from dublin city university currently suresh heads a nanotechnology and bioengineering research group he is the national delegate and technical expert for international standard organization standardization committee and european standardization organization committee on photo catalytic material suresh we are all proud of what you are doing being at the cutting edge of nanotechnology in the world you are seen as the man of nanotechnology in kerala the floor is yours thank you amarul chatta for the kind introduction um, so i was asked to talk about talk about uh, what is changing in science so before that i would like to give a short introduction on uh, what why why should you do science so let us start talking about why would i do science let me take you to almost 100 years ago precisely 1897 when jj thompson discovered the electrons that was a revolutionary change jj thompson discovered the electrons while working on cathode ray cathode ray tubes he proved that 
how those rays were negatively charged, and later it was called electrons. In the last 100 years, we learned how to control these tiny particles for various applications. Now we know how to control, how to manipulate, how to change, or how to design devices based on these small particles. I'm talking to you through an electronic media by controlling the electrons. Look around you. These tiny particles are controlling every part of our life. Our life has been changed. Our life has been significantly changed or improved in various areas, not only in technology, in healthcare, education, social and societal aspects of life. How did this happen? This all happened because we know and understand properly how to control these small particles called electrons. It's not only electrons, it's not only the invention of electron, electrons that change the world. A, a significant number of, or a series of inventions can be light after, after, the, after this. Einstein's formulas. Number of theories, theories in thermodynamics, there is about life, light, evolution. All these contributed into our modern life. So discovering the electrons or making theories behind it is science, but controlling or developing it into devices is engineering or technology. So we need good scientists to make inventions for the future. We need smart students doing fundamental science. I'm not advocating that every smart student should do science. What I'm advocating or what I'm saying is some of you, some of you who has genuine in, in, interest in science should do science. Why? Because science is only a, a part of, of our life. We need good engineers. We need good lawyers. We need good doctors. We need good accountants. We need good truck drivers. We need good police officers. We need smart people everywhere, every part of our life. And science is only a fraction of this. And science is one of those areas or one of those professions where you can contribute to the world and to the next generations. So if you are genuinely interested in science, don't hesitate to take science as a major subject. Look into the panel. All of them have taken science as their profession. And as uh, Dr. Murali Tumarikudi said earlier, everybody came through the public education system studied in government schools, in local schools. So if you are genuinely interested in science, don't hesitate to take it. It's a good profession. There are a lot of opportunities in future. I was also asked to talk about the changes happened in science education in abroad and in India. I would like to mainly talk about two things. One is problem-based education or PBL. PBL is an effective student-centered learning approach where students learn from projects or solving problems or undertaking small group discussions by through critical thinking, brainstorming, and uh, finding out unique solutions. The second aspect, what has happened in the world or in developed countries are multidisciplinary learning of science. Sometimes it is called interdisciplinary learning. 
This is a very effective learning method integrating multiple knowledge domains together. For example, take space as an example. When we talk about space, we only think about physics or astrophysics. But it can be a combination of physics, mathematics, computer modeling, chemistry, also physics, obviously, and biology as well. That all can be effectively incorporated. Multidisciplinary learning will enhance the scope of depth, scope and depth of learning. So I'll be happy to contribute more in later sessions. I would let other speakers to talk now. Thank you, um, Suresh. I think one point which Suresh made uh, was, very, was very important. If you really want to do science, please do it. It still has opportunity. <clears throat> science in Kerala has been sort of relegated into a second place after the professional courses. But if you really are passionate about science, science is still a fantastic career opportunity. I'll come back to you, Suresh, with a few questions later. But now I have the pleasure of inviting Dr. Asha Aravind, who is working in the field of nano, um, in the field of phys physics and material properties. Dr. Asha Aravind completed her master's in physics from University College, Trivandrum. After that, she obtained her PhD in physics with specialization in condensed matter theory from Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research. And currently she is working nano and molecular research unit at the University of Oulu in Finland. I am very delighted to have um, Asha, um, a very inspirational person, but also a promising researcher uh, to our panel. And um, Asha, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mirulichita, for the very kind introduction. Uh, so I am Asha, and my field is theoretical condensed matter physics, and I'm working in Aulu, Finland. So I'm basically asked to uh, speak uh, about the importance of physics research, the import of importance of physics education. Uh, before going to the details, uh, if we talk about physics, even child will be remembering about Newton and Newton's of motion. That will be the first thing most people will remember when you talk about physics. And yes, Newton's laws of equations are very important. And uh, actually, those are the equations which helped us to send people to moon. So all the planetary explorations and uh, all this projectile motion, everything is based on uh, macroscopic uh, Newton's laws of motion. Now, uh, after some point, so when we uh, started talking about matter, material physics, because to advance forward, we need materials and uh, all materials in this world, which is living or non-living, which is composed of atoms. And as you all know, atoms has electrons and protons and all these atomic particles. And basically, uh, like Suresh sir said, uh, the motion of electrons basically governs a lot of material properties. And this is a very complex problem finding out uh, how the electrons move in space and time. Actually, it determines almost everything. So I would say like physics is underlying in everything uh, in this terrestrial world. So this was a complex phenomena. Scientists were struggling for a long time. And uh, at some point, uh, I would like to actually now draw your attention to Switzerland, where our Murali Chetan is working and uh, you know he's now based on Switzerland, Geneva. And Switzerland is a very important place in the history of physics. You know why? Because it is there Einstein formulated the theory of relativity. Uh, so that is somehow a place close to my heart before even Murali Chetan went there. So at some point, okay, Einstein did this theory of relativity and another scientist uh, during a Christmas holidays in 1927, his name is Erwin Schrodinger. He is basically an Austrian physicist who was holidaying in uh, Switzerland. In the 1920s, actually, scientists were actually uh, troubled with, okay, how we can uh, understand the motion of electrons, because that will help us solve a lot of issues in physics, not only in physics, but also in materials like chemistry and everything. So he was skiing, and then suddenly this thought occurred to him, okay, some ideas he is getting, 
how to describe the motion of electrons. So before he forget the things, he wrote a letter to his, uh, he wrote a letter in German to his friend. And in that he told, yeah, I am getting some ideas and I'm very positive about it. If I can solve it, it will be fantastic, but I don't know how I will solve it. He was right. He couldn't solve that, but he could formulate the Schrodinger equation. And Schrodinger, uh, Schrodinger's name actually most science enthusiasts know because there is also something called Schrodinger's cat. Everybody will talk about at some point. So uh, that's that's how the first Schrodinger equation came. Schrodinger wrote this letter, and then he goes on solving it, and he couldn't solve it exactly. But after some time, he got Nobel Prize for this related uh, research. And uh, time went on and many scientists eventually they tried to solve this equation and many approximations came and you know now we know how to control the electrons motion and what equations are governing it and everything. Like Suresh Sar was telling like uh, literally we are controlling electrons and our technology is based on it. You may not be knowing it because you are using your phones and you are using all these devices. And now everybody is talking about artificial intelligence, big data and everything. But all this is possible now because of those combined effort of many scientists over many years and uh, you know, science progressed. So what I want to tell is science is not something about earning a living um, getting a degree and going for a job and uh, you know making a life it's not a, not only that it is that but it is a little bit about that you know science is something which propels the progress of society forward so at, like my point is like society needs scientists and uh, it is a career which is uh, worth uh, pursuing satisfying and you know you are not only doing for you and your family if you do science career and if you do some uh, really good research it will benefit the society and uh, it will stay there forever so this is my initial introduction about physics as well as about uh, science education uh, further uh, i have been asked to talk something about uh, coming to research whether only uh, science graduates can pursue research or engineering uh, people can also do basic research. It is very much possible because uh, science, like uh, research is not a, a you know, narrow thing. It is a multidisciplinary area where many branches of science and technology come hand in hand. And so anybody having a degree in civil engineering or mechanical engineering, they can very well do a lot of research. And even in India, there are uh, courses offered in uh, IITs and stuff where you can do uh, you know, uh, basic research after pursuing these engineering degrees. Uh, to say an example, uh, if you, for example, if you have a degree in mechanical engineering, you can very well go to nanotechnology research because when it comes to nanomaterials, mechanical properties are very important, just for an example. So, you may you may not be doing these things in your BTEC, but you can pursue science research in these areas. So and also there is uh, machine learning, data science that is getting integrated into every branch of science and technology, even in civil engineering and everything. So there are a lot of opportunities out there for engineers also to pursue basic research and contribute to the pool of uh, knowledge. And another question I was uh, asked to answer is, okay, now this is a pandemic situation. And how is it affecting research? Yes, uh, it is affecting research in some way, like, you know, people are not able to do uh, going to the labs and do research like they did before Corona times, which whatever needs manually, like manual presence in the labs, it, it has hindered a little bit, it has hindered, but uh, at the same time, it has also opened a lot of opportunities, like a lot of webinars, like what we are do doing now. And also it has opened, nobody thought about doing this much online teaching and webinars before. So that kind of uh, revolution uh, is happening uh, online during Corona times. And also uh, research funding may have shifted more towards the virology and vaccine development side. That can be affecting other areas, core research subjects for some time, but it can go away. That is one thing. So that is my uh, initial thinking about this pandemic uh, situation, research in pandemic situation. Thank and you. the most important thing which was asked to me is about as a female, how, what is my experience in India and working abroad? Uh, I feel like uh, it is not easy, even in India and even in abroad, it's not easy, but it's not impossible. Uh, you know, if you are motivation driven, there are ways you can do your research. Uh, and obviously, 
in abroad, especially because I'm in Finland here, uh, work-life balance is kind of appreciated and you get time to for your family as well. But it may not be possible in some places and in some countries, there will be challenges. Uh, globally also the number of women are less as you know you all know like you may not be seeing much women there may be women number of women will be more in uh, bachelors and masters but after that to pursue a phd and stuff you really need society su support of society you also need family support especially in countries like india it's not easy for a woman to fight all the you know society things and come out and do research but it's not impossible i am an example for that you can still do if you are motivational and inspirational, you can go ahead with that. And, and you know, uh, now it is the Nobel Prize has just announced. And you see in physics, there are two women. In chemistry also, there is a woman who found out the genetic tool to, you know, that is the software which was like, which could uh, revolutionize the genetic research. Like, uh, so women can thrive if they get the opportunity and support. And uh, so, yes, the final answer is yes, females are, uh, like females can thrive, there are challenges, but at the same time, uh, people are, the research community is also realizing that, uh, yes, women should be given more opportunities and biological needs of women should be taken into consideration. For example, uh, a woman uh, may need some more time to finish a PhD if she is having a child or if she is childbearing, she needs support, not only from her family, but also from the research group. These things are nowadays being discussed more and more. Not only about women, actually these days, uh, the role of minorities like LGBT people, all these, like we don't hear much about LGBT people in science, not only really women. So uh, there is a lack of, uh, like the space is not very fitting for them for, for many years and now, but people are realizing it and they started talking about it. The diversity and inclusion aspect is much more discussed these days. And I am, I am post, uh, like positive that I'm, I'm not pessimistic about it. I'm thinking that uh, situations will improve and uh, um, yes, women can thrive in science. Thank you. Thank you, Asha, for that um, very interesting presentation, but also the reflection of um, being a female um, researcher. And this year, I think, is particularly good uh, in the Nobel laureates. Uh, there are many women among the Nobel laureates. I now have the pleasure of introducing um, Dr. Najib Kuril who is the staff engineer at Exxon Mobil Corporation. He has actually written probably one of the first engineering novels in, in, in Kerala. There has been many novels with engineers in it, but this novel, Najib's novel is actually about you know, explaining engineering um, and it's with the exclusive purpose of motivating people to take engineering uh, as a study stream. But Najib is also passionate about why science should be taught to engineering students, something which even most engineers don't understand. Dr. Najib did his PhD um, and um, he is an expert in fuels, lubricants and engine combustion. He has a PhD in bio-renewable resources from Iowa State University and master's degree in combustion and energy from University of Leeds in the United Kingdom. He has published his scientific research in many prestigious journals and holds many U.S. patents. He lives in Houston, Texas. Najib, you have the floor. Thanks, Murusheta, for that uh, very generous uh, introduction. Um, so my topic today is um, importance of science education in engineering. And, you know, engineering is very important because engineering is all around us. Whatever we see around us is engineering, right? Uh, all man-made stuff is uh, engineering. And engineering has a huge impact on our um, quality of life. And today, uh, with, uh, with new technologies like artificial intelligence, um, uh, robotics, and, and biotechnology, all sorts of uh, new, te new technologies coming in, you know, we need a lot of uh, capable, plenty of capable engineers uh, to, to lead all these developments. So, you know, uh, the operative word here is capable, actually, because India produces over a million uh, engineers every year. But we all know that most of them are not very uh, employable. They are not very capable of doing real, uh, real world engineering. So this is a problem. 
And a developing country like India has to definitely fix this problem, right? And one way of fixing that problem is uh, achieving excellence in science education. Now, uh, for a moment, let's take a look at engineering. What is engineering? Engineering is you know, designing, building, and operating products, processes, and complex systems. So the key element about engineering is its practicality. The products we design and build should work, right? So that's, that's the most important thing about engineering, it's practicality. And unfortunately, uh, this, this element of practicality is missing from both our science education and engineering education. So this is, this is an important point. So um, the major reason why most of our engineering graduates are uh, not able to do real world engineering is that when they choose engineering, they didn't, most of them, I'm saying, they don't know what it takes to be an engineer or whether or not they have the aptitude to become engineers. That's an important thing. So this is why science education is extremely important for engineering education. Now, uh, when we design uh, engineers, when we design and, and build a product, what are we, when we design, what are we exactly doing? We define every single detail of that product, for example, uh, to build that product, right? Every dimension, every material details, every detail has to be designed and provided to, to someone who is making that product. That's, that's the design process. Now, how do we do this? Obviously, we don't use uh, witchcraft or astrology, do we? No, we use math and science. Engineers use math and science to calculate the forces, the temperature, the pressure, loads, uh, velocity, you name it. All these properties, we, uh, material properties, we use math and science to calculate all these. Uh, for, an, for example, you know, think about it. Every, uh, every animal on the planet knows that to move an object, a force must be applied, right? You might have seen ants moving food debris, uh, a dog playing with uh, cans or uh, a football. Uh, and you might have seen an elephant lifting heavy loads. So every animal pretty much knows that to move an uh, object, you need to push or pull or lift, right? But of the 9 million species on the planet, we are the only species that can calculate exactly how much force is required to move an object at exact acceleration, right? Force equals mass times acceleration, Newton's second law of motion. We could calculate, uh, you know, if we have to pump, uh, you know, 100 liters per minute of water from a well to a tank 10 meters higher, we can exactly calculate how much power is required for that pump, right? We can exactly calculate. We can exactly calculate the, the power of an engine of a car to move that car from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in five seconds. We can calculate those things exactly. We can even calculate the escape velocity from Earth, go out of the planet and come back, right? We can do all these because of math and science. And I can tell you being a practicing engineer, you know, engineering flies on the wings of math and science. So it's, it's imperative for the students uh, to be able to use scientific principles to solve real world problems. Right? That's what we do, real, solving real world problems. And to make the, uh, the, the students capable of doing that, we need excellent science teachers. And how do, we, how, do we, how do we create excellent science teachers? We have to create a higher education ecosystem where the teachers themselves have ample opportunities to do research and, and practice real science and solve real world problems. They should be in touch with real world problems and real world science then they can teach good science to, to, the, to the students. So it, it, it's, it's imperative that we, we, we again, we, we, we make that kind of an ecosystem in, in higher education where knowledge creation and research are given a lot of importance. That's the only way we can um, inspire science teachers and students alike and then, and then um, impart the required skills to both teachers and students. Uh, with this, um, I thank you for listening, and I look forward to um, a panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Najib. Um
you know, of all the engineers I have seen in my life, you are probably the most passionate about the link between engineering and science. Most people who do engineering actually do engineering engineering, while most people who do science, they actually do science. And I'm reminded of the recent movie called Hidden Figures. Uh, I'm sure you would have seen it, where you have a number of you know, black women, they are called computers at that time because there are no, you know, computer, computer then. And, you know, they are asked to calculate the exact location where the, um, the returning, um, you know, air, when returning from airspace, Mr. Uh, um, I can't remember the first astronaut's name now, uh, would land and she is now calculating it live. Of course, you know, they're dramatizing it. But the, the point is that however much engineering you know, how much, however much rocket you can make, if you don't know where to send it and bring it back, it's really of no use. So, you know, it is uh, absolutely important that science is taught in engineering, but also people understand it. I must say, I'm very delighted by the participation, not only from the panel, but also from the field. I am uh, now, if people see me looking down, I'm actually looking down onto my machine, onto my mobile phone, to look at the YouTube link, look at the Facebook link, and there are hundreds of people in both places, and there are comments coming in. So please keep your comments coming on the uh, Facebook page as well, as well as the YouTube page. We are noticing it. There are people um, you know, uh, compiling it, and we'll be answering those uh, questions. So thank you to all those who are watching from around the world. And we are extremely delighted at the numbers, but also the nature of questions coming. I now have the pleasure of introducing um, Anjana, who, as I mentioned already, uh, you know, whose brainchild this all Education 21C is. She's the youngest, and she has been um, through the Kerala public education system, the most recent. And when she, then she went, went on to study in IIT Kanpur, IIT Chennai, and now she's a postdoctoral fellow at um, IIT Mumbai. And it has always been her passion that people like her and all of us who went through the Kerala education system should get more opportunity to study in higher education institutions. To do that, people should start to develop a fundamental interest in the topic, and the teachers should be, as Najib said, should be prepared to elevate them and create that interest. So, Anjana, it's great pleasure for me to invite you to this session. Thank you. Thank you, Nudir Mama, for that wonderful introduction. So, we all know that Kerala has been doing extremely well in providing equity and access for basic education to everyone. However, I feel this is the time for us to move to the next level when it comes to uh, science education. So today I would like to discuss a few insights about the higher education in science, especially based on my experience at different IITs. Uh, so we know that in our universities in Kerala, our science education is especially based on a very strict and a very rigid syllabus. And our teachers are always in a hurry to finish all the important aspects in this particular syllabus before the exams. However, if you see the IIT system here, they follow a slightly different approach and there is no very rigid syllabus uh, people are following, faculty are following here. Here, the teachers are trying to teach the fundamentals and uh, basic concepts about each scientific phenomena. So the most important uh, advantage or the biggest advantage of this, this, this type of system is that the students will understand the scientific concepts in a better way. And this will help them to be, uh, make a very strong foundation about science, which will be very helpful for them in future. And a very important aspect that I have noticed in IIT system, the whole IIT system, whether it is science or it is uh, technology or whatever that may be. So they give more importance to students and the IIT system as a whole is more student-centric. 
here the teacher student relationship is very relaxed and uh, the classes are very interactive interactive always so the students are always encouraged to ask more questions to the students and uh, we will have a lot of other interactive sections such as a lot of seminar presentations and a lot of group discussions and all these exercises help the students to think out of the box and to have a very positive outlook towards science. In addition, there is another important aspect is that we have a very strong feedback system where the students are asked to give uh, their honest opinion about the teachers who are uh, taking the classes. I, after every course, there is a very good feedback system. So such a system where uh, the teaching is based on feedback and also based on interaction. So, uh, such a system helps these students to have a very open outlook towards science and also to have a free thinking when it comes to science. So I feel that this is one aspect which we have to adopt to our universities in Kerala. And I think our teachers in universities in Kerala have to make a deliberate attempt to make students ask more questions in classes and also to have a very good interaction with the students. Because uh, if we want to have a very good science education, we need to have a proper interaction between students and teachers. And another aspect which may be very important, and I can say that the most important aspect I have seen in IIT uh, is that here all the teachers, all the faculties are researchers also. So learning science from researcher will give a realistic understanding or realistic idea about the text, textbook science or textbook, uh, textbook material which we usually study in our uh, universities. So I have seen here in IITs, I have seen faculty take the data from their lab and explain the uh, underlying principles of that data to the students in class. So such a real life experience and such visible results will help the students to get a uh, very realistic idea about science and uh, that will always incite the curiosity in their minds which will uh, make them read and study more about science. Further, this type of a system or such faculties who are very active researchers will help the students to get a very updated or up-to-date idea about new scientific advances that are happening in, uh, in the field on a regular basis across the globe. And um, that is a very uh, big advantage, I would say, because uh, this type of a uh, up-to-date idea about new advances are missing in our education system in Kerala. So uh, while I was doing masters, I didn't read any scientific journal where new scientific discoveries are getting published regularly. But in IATs, referring to such journals and uh, discussion about such journals or research pub getting published in such journals are very important. And even the master students are very familiar with this. So this is, I would say, this is the biggest advantage or this is the uh, biggest difference that make an IAT student better than the rest of the students from our university. So I strongly feel that this is the right time for us to incorporate this aspect to our studies or our universities as early as possible so that our students also will be getting more idea about the recent advances in uh, scientific research that are happening globally. This is very important and I think we should be uh, seriously thinking about it as early as possible. And, and when we talk about research universities, if we look at the leading research universities across the globe, whether it can be MIT or Harvard or any other top institute, we know that they are offering a lot of courses and they are offering research in a wide variety of topics. So here IIT is also following almost a similar pattern and we have very active research departments in terms of humanities, arts, and in terms of science, engineering, etc. So learning science or doing scientific research in this type of a background will always give us more opportunities to have an effective collaboration and which will lead to a very interdisciplinary science or interdisciplinary, more very interesting interdisciplinary science. And this is considered as the future for 
science research. I'm not going to talk about the details because I think Billy is going to have a, uh, going to talk about this in the next session. Um, so this type of an interdisciplinary or collaborative approach is very important and we need more research universities in Kerala also where we will be able to uh, have different branches of science and humanities and law and even biology in same campus so that students will be able to have a very collaborative research and very interdisciplinary study uh, which will help them to uh, advance in their field. And I would like to conclude my session by mentioning uh, about a very important aspect, which is the gender inequality that we see in our research institutions. Uh, as Murli Maman mentioned some time back, and Ash also mentioned that the, we have four women Nobel laureates this year, which is uh, among them three are from science, which is very exciting for people like me. But when we look at the Indian situation, uh, the representation from women's side is very low. We don't have enough women in our lab. We, the government is introducing new schemes to attract more women to come forward and start doing research. But still, we don't have enough women working in the field of science. So in my opinion, scientific research is a very good career option for women. And obviously, the women should have uh, the women who are coming forward in this field should have passion for science and they should be able to take up challenging careers also. Still, this is a very good career of opinion for women and I feel this is the right time for more women to come forward and start doing scientific research in our laboratories so that we will be having a more gender balanced uh, situation in our laboratories in the near future. So that brings us to the end of my talk. And thank you everyone for listening. Thank you, Anjana, for that uh, very interesting um, comparison between studying in Kerala as well as in teaching and learning in IIT. And also about the fact that there are you know, only 11% you know, women in the uh, higher education. Whereas in Kerala, you know, as you know, the 70% of uh, women in the colleges are actually women, but you know, their numbers gradually come down. Finally, we have um, Dr. Dilip Mambuli, who again don't need an introduction to the Malayali science audience because among the young scientists who are able to communicate to ordinary people about very complex subjects such as DNA, such as evolution, I think there is nobody like Dilip um, these days. He is very, not only is very articulate, but also he don't mind taking up difficult issues at difficult times. So I have seen him you know, standing up for science in situations where other people would probably let go. Dilip is the award-winning author of a book in Malayalam on evolution. Currently, he's the assistant professor in Indian Institute of Science, Education, and Research, Tirupati. He obtained his MSc from Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, in physics, and his PhD from University of Tent in Netherlands. He worked at the University of Glasgow as a postdoctoral research. Currently, Philippe is working in an interdisciplinary field involving physics and biology. He is the recipient of the Joseph Montessori Foundation Prize for the Young Science Writer in 2019 for his book. And I'm sure there are a lot more books and a lot more awards to come. Philippe, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you for this kind introduction. Yeah, good evening to all. Uh, today, I would like to talk about the need for our curriculum to be multidisciplinary. Actually, the world of research is multidisciplinary. Except for some uh, core areas, research cannot be classified as like physics, chemistry, or biology. It is actually a mix of everything if you look into really into research. For example, uh, someone studying mechanism of bacterial motion should know physics and mathematics and some biology of bacteria. And let's say researchers are developing biomedical sensors. They should understand chemistry, biology, and engineering aspects, and of course, some physics and mathematics. For example, someone want making a sensor to detect tumor cells. They should know biology of cancer and mechanism of detection, which may be chemistry or uh, physics. So it's truly interdisciplinary. 
and sometimes when you want to make sensors you should also know about micro fabrication of microstructures and some micro electronic sensor and it's all there is also a lot of collaboration i mean you don't have to know everything now so there are a lot of uh, interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary areas like biophysics biochemistry chemical biology biomedical engineering material science soft matter engineering management and so on now nowadays there is another very hot area which is called uh, data science and data science is actually the future of uh, let's say job industry and so on so human life is actually connected with a lot of data to predict whether uh, to predict uh, market trends automation genetic disease predicting diseases and so many things so, uh, huge data is to be analyzed now for example a scientist who is doing uh, genetic data analysis should know about uh, math, should know mathematics statistics computer programming and of course genetics so we should ask this question uh, are we preparing our students for this modern world it is not in the name of the degree but what you learned and what skills you gained in this degree and that gives your uh, dream job in fact now actually i met one in fact i worked with someone who is having a phd in chemistry he also did masters in economics and now he is a manager in a uh, in a company that makes chemical sensors now see how, how interdisciplinary uh, someone can be now internationally if you look into uh, look at different uh, universities and their curriculum they make the curriculum to be very interdisciplinary and in india if you look at uh, a curriculum of icer or iit they also have very interdisciplinary uh, curriculum for example in icer you can take a mix of topics for example uh, from different departments a physics students can take uh, genetics or ecology or uh, or some chemistry uh, subject now if you look into our normal universities uh, there are i mean when you join there you have bsc physics chemistry biology or in economics and all the courses are assigned to you or maybe there are some chances for uh, electives but i don't think you can take a elective from different departments maybe it's possible but yeah i don't think it's very popular now so this kind of interdisciplinary approach is what we want uh, in our curriculum actually i was in a uh, interview panel once and i met a student uh, who is a computer engineer but he wanted to do phd in theoretical physics so we interviewed him very well and he learned all physics uh, courses from nptel online courses he understood the fundamentals so nicely and in fact we all got surprised actually he did because of his pure interest just from his heart okay so nothing limits so the question is why should we limit for example a history student or economic student from studying science or vice versa earlier there was some limitation of uh, 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 the seats number of seats in a college now in the online world there is no such limitations um, you can create n number of seats so the question is why do we segregate subject wise and force a student to learn a full course and only in a particular area now we should change uh, this system and let's say uh, we should be able to take uh, online courses from authentic uh, authentic sources such as nkn or um, that is national knowledge network and nptel and allow students to take courses and fill their credit requirements this makes them to uh, facilitate for studying uh, or take uh, you know uh, exploring different uh, courses and different areas i hope these things will happen um, soon in our higher education system and uh, yeah i think uh, our this education 21c the, the our, our new venture can support and motivate students uh, in this regard so thank you very much for listening thank you dilip i you know i have a timer next to me and uh, i was timing while all the speakers are speaking and you know dilip 
is stopping at four minute 59 seconds. I don't know if you practiced it, but if you did or did not, you, are, you did extremely well. Um, thank you. So we had the first round of um, very interesting presentation and range of people. And as I said, all of us are from Kerala. So പഠിച്ചുകൊണ്ടോ മലയാളം മീഡിയത്തിൽ പഠിച്ചതുകൊണ്ടോ ശാസ്ത്രത്തിന്റെ ഏറ്റവും അങ്ങ് എഡ്ജിൽ വർക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടി യാതൊരു ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടുമില്ല ഇത് ഞങ്ങളെല്ലാം വൗച്ച് ചെയ്യുന്നതാണ് പ്രത്യേകിച്ചും ആശ എല്ലാം ആ ഫിൻലാൻഡിൽ അവര് പ്രത്യേകം പറയുന്നതാണ് മദർ ടങ്ങിൽ പഠിപ്പിക്കുന്നതാണ് കൂടുതൽ നല്ലതെന്നുള്ള എല്ലാ നാട്ടിലും പറയുന്നതാണ് പക്ഷെ ഫിൻലാൻഡിൽ അത് പ്രത്യേകിച്ചും റീ എംഫസൈസ് ചെയ്യുന്നതാണ് I'll go to the set of questions which we have received. Lots and lots of questions. We have a lot 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 of interdisciplinary teaching. That's what we have already said. We have a lot of research. We have a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions. Najib, one question. ഒരു ഫാക്കൽറ്റി മെമ്പർ ഇവിടെ കംപ്ലൈന്റ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നു അതായത് അവർക്ക് ധാരാളം നോൺ അക്കാഡമിക് ആയിട്ടുള്ള വർക്ക് കിട്ടുന്നുണ്ടെന്നുള്ളത് സുരേഷ് ഒരു സെന്റർ ഹെഡ് ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് സുരേഷിന് അറിയാതിരിക്കും അതായത് വാസ്തവത്തിൽ ഇതൊരു ഗ്ലോബൽ പ്രോബ്ലം ആണ് നമ്മുടെ നാട്ടിൽ ഒരു സെറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഇതിനായിരിക്കാം നമ്മൾ ഡിപ്ലോ ചെയ്യുന്നത് നിങ്ങൾ മറ്റു നാടുകളിൽ വേറൊരു സെറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഇഷ്യൂസ് ആണ് പക്ഷെ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് റിയലി ഇൻ ഇഷ്യൂ നമ്മളുടെ ഒരു ലെവലിലും നമുക്ക് നൂറ് ശതമാനം സമയം ഗവേഷണത്തിൽ ചെയ്യാനായിട്ട് സാധിച്ചു എന്ന് വരില്ല പക്ഷെ ഈ ചോദ്യം ഫണ്ടിങ്ങിനെ പറ്റിയിട്ടാണ് ഇസ് ദ ഫണ്ടിങ് ഫോർ ബേസിക് റിസർച്ച് ഇൻക്രീസിംഗ് ഓർ ഡിക്രീസിംഗ് ഗ്ലോബലി ആർ ദർ സം കൺട്രീസ് ഇൻവെസ്റ്റിംഗ് മോർ ഇൻ ബേസിക് റിസർച്ച് ദാൻ അതേഴ്സ് ഇതാണ് സുരേഷിനോടാണ് ചോദ്യം ക്വസ്റ്റിന് രണ്ട് പാർട്ടുണ്ട് ആദ്യം നമ്മുടെ അഡ്മിനിസ്ട്രേറ്റീവ് ജോബിനെ പറ്റിയാണ് അത് അത് എല്ലാ തൊഴിലിലും ഉള്ളതാണ് നമ്മൾ വർക്ക് ചെയ്യുന്ന ആ സെക്ടർ അല്ലാതെ അഡീഷണൽ ആയിട്ട് ചെയ്യേണ്ടി വരും അത് ഇപ്പം എന്റെ കാര്യം തന്നെ എടുത്തു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഞാൻ റിസർച്ച് ടീച്ചിങ് ടീച്ചിങ് റിസർച്ച് ഇത് രണ്ടും ഫിഫ്റ്റി ഫിഫ്റ്റി ചെയ്യണം പക്ഷെ അതിന്റെ കൂടെ തന്നെ അഡ്മിനിസ്ട്രേറ്റീവ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള പല കാര്യങ്ങളും ഗ്രൂപ്പ് മാനേജ് ചെയ്യണം റിസർച്ച് ഫണ്ടിങ്ങിനുള്ള റിപ്പോർട്ട് കൊടുക്കണം ചിലപ്പം ചിലർക്ക് കെമിക്കൽസ് ഓർഡർ ഓർഡർ ചെയ്യുന്നതിന് എന്തെങ്കിലും പ്രശ്നങ്ങൾ കാണും അപ്പൊ അതിന്റെ എല്ലാം അഡ്മിനിസ്ട്രേറ്റീവ് പ്രോബ്ലംസ് അതെല്ലാം ഇസ് എ നാച്ചുറൽ ആൻഡ് ഓർഗാനിക് പ്രോസസ് അത് നമ്മൾ ചെയ്തേ പറ്റുള്ളൂ അതിനായിട്ട് ചിലപ്പോൾ അഡീഷണൽ ടൈം കണ്ടെത്തേണ്ടി വരും ഇതൊക്കെ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി ജോബ് പക്ഷെ മെയിൻ ആയിട്ട് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഒരു അക്കാഡമിഷ്യന്റെ മെയിൻ ജോബ് എന്റെ ഇതിൽ റിസർച്ച് ആണ് മെയിൻ ആയിട്ട് ഒരു സിക്സ്റ്റി പെർസെന്റ് റിസർച്ചും ഒരു ഫോർട്ടി പെർസെന്റേജ് ടീച്ചിങ്ങും എന്ന രീതിയിലാണ് സാധാരണ വിദേശ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റികളിലൊക്കെ കാണാറുള്ളത് നമ്മുടെ കോളേജുകളിലും യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റികളിലും ഒന്നും ആ ഒരു രീതിയിലേക്ക് വന്നിട്ടില്ല ഇപ്പം ട്വന്റി അല്ലെ ട്വന്റി ഫൈവ് അവർ അവരുടെ ടീച്ചിങ്ങേ ഉള്ളൂ റിസർച്ച് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി ഹോബി അല്ലെ പ്രൊമോഷൻ കിട്ടാനുള്ള ഒരു ഒരു പാർട്ട് എന്നുള്ള രീതിയിലാണ് മുന്നോട്ട് അത് മാറി വരണം തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും അത് ഇവെന്റലി മാറും യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റികളിലൊക്കെ മാറിയിട്ടുണ്ട് കേരളത്തില് ഇപ്പം മഹാത്മാഗാന്ധി യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റിയൊക്കെ റിസർച്ചിലൊക്കെ വളരെ മുന്നിലാണ് കേരളത്തിലെ കാര്യം എടുത്തു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ സ്കൂൾ ഓഫ് കെമിക്കൽ സയൻസ് ഓക്കെ പല ഇന്നോവേഷൻസ് ഒക്കെ പേറ്റന്റുകൾ നല്ല ലോകത്തോട് തന്നെ കിടപിടിക്കാവുന്ന പലതരം പേറ്റന്റുകളൊക്കെ ഇതുപോലുള്ള സ്ഥാപനങ്ങളിൽ നിന്ന് വന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് മഹാത്മാഗാന്ധി യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി കേരള യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി കാലിക്കറ്റ് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ഉൾപ്പെടെ കുസാറ്റ് ഇവിടെ നിന്നൊക്കെ വരാറുണ്ട് അതുപോലെ എൻ ഐ ടികളിലൊക്കെ ധാരാളം റിസർച്ചുകൾ പക്ഷെ നമ്മുടെ കോളേജുകളിലേക്ക് നോക്കുമ്പോൾ ഇപ്പോഴും ടീച്ചിങ് ആണ് മെയിൻ ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു അതും ഇവെന്റലി ചേഞ്ച് ചെയ്യാവുന്നതാണ് കാരണം റിസർച്ച് സെന്ററുകളൊക്കെ ധാരാളം കോളേജുകളിലേക്ക് വരുന്നുണ്ട് രണ്ടാമത്തേത് ക്വസ്റ്റിന് ഹൗ ദ റിസർച്ച് ഫണ്ട് ഈസ് ദ ഫണ്ടിങ് ഫോർ ബേസിക് റിസർച്ച് ഇസ് ഇൻക്രീസിംഗ് ഗ്ലോബലി ഓർ ഡിക്രീസിംഗ് ഡിക്രീസിംഗ് ഗ്ലോബലി ഐ വിൽ ആൻസർ ദാറ്റ് ക്വസ്റ്റിൻ ഇൻ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ബിക്കോസ് വി ഹാവ് എ ബിഗർ ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഹിയർ സോ and the second part of are there um, are there some countries investing more in basic research than others so that is the question if you look into the worldwide scenario the top 5 countries invest in
Republic of Korea and Germany, Germany and Japan. So these are the countries who invest heavily in research. Mm -hmm. And of course, the global trend is, incre like a, uh, is, is increasing on, on research. For example, uh, USA, 6% increase in funding uh, was reported for 2019 and uh, over 2018. So there is a consistent increase uh, in research in USA for the past several years. If you look into China, there are over 10% increase in funding um, since uh, 2017. So of course, some countries are investing more than other countries. So some countries are in, uh, the investment is usually calculated as a percentage of the GDP, just for uh, an example, okay? So it's always cal calculated as a percentage of the GDP. Uh, the most, uh, in, uh, like uh, the countries, two countries, for example, South Korea and Israel, for example, they are, they are investing into R&D 4% of their total GDP. That's a huge investment in research, okay? And most of the countries, for example, USA, or many of the European countries, their investment would be between one to three percentage. That is even significant. If you look into India, our investment is close to one percentage. It's still significant. India is a huge economy. Our, if you look into the GDP, uh, it's uh, one of the top five economies in the world. So even 0.9 percentage or one percentage of investment is huge in India, but that is still not enough. So we need more investment in research in India. So we need to go up to the level of China or, or, or at least uh, USA or other European countries in future. So my recommendation is uh, like going from 0 0.9 to at least 2% in the beginning, at least double the investment in research to improve the infrastructure in research. Thanks. Thank you, um, Suresh. Um, and I actually did not know the Republic of Korea is actually among the top five because you know the Republic of Korea is probably has very similar population as to Kerala actually. Correct. And um, I uh, I remember talking to my friends from Korea who said in the 1960s, you know, their GDP was comparable to you know what is in Kerala, and now they are considered a developed country. And you can and you can see that. Question, Suresh, you you are saying something. Yeah, you can see that the, the products coming from that country, you, you look yeah. into the, the companies like Samsung or yeah. LG, you know, like all, all many of the top brands are coming yeah, from, and this is all part of the, the basic research investment. Just go on. Thank you. As I have a very interesting um, question here, and uh, you know, you may be able to um, answer it because I, if I remember correctly talking to you, when you completed either your BSc or MSc, you applied for a PSC examination in Kerala and you passed it. You probably got a job and then you even joined there. And then you decided to move on and go to research. So the question which has come is that, you know, how do you keep your interest in science alive if you do not, um, if you cannot, you know, continue into your PhD? So I want you to answer as to what, you know, in Kerala to get a PSC job is, you know, it's like the dream. And this is what most our science graduates are now dreaming, or even engineers are now dreaming, actually. So what really pushed you into move back into research um, and also go outside Kerala? I think that personal story would be very interesting. Thank you. Thanks, Marini Cheta, for that question. Um, maybe I can answer that in Malayalam. Uh, OK, Nyana BSc, MSc, Karinya, Samayat. Kerala thale inna thay pol aisaro IIT ono ondaer nila. Apo oru inna korshudar oru science na korshuru avabodham onda. Indiyile ko thane institutions kudi Kerala thale naamke central institutions akavano. Apo anna ini enda ana enna oru oru exposure ono onda kiti nila. Prateeche college lella teachers na thayam patila enna vena ki paraya. Apo korshu markini endi MSc varchu. So ini endi in job vena. Apo oru middle class family ana. So, of course, I need to settle. Apo Munil Ella the PSC jobs and Apo Kanda PSC jobs in a application HO other KD. Research chain and a Kagra Hunter, but Shangan a chim, Evida chim, Angan and the Malay ideal. So, uh, actually, not only one job, I got a uh, lot of uh, Kerala government jobs, actually, a lot of, uh, you know, that uh, memo, joining memo came to at least six jobs I got, including secretariat assistant, revenue department uh, job. And uh, I was very young also. 
സോ വീട്ടുകാർക്കൊക്കെ സന്തോഷമായിരുന്നു ബിക്കോസ് ആ ഏജിൽ ഞാൻ ആ ജോബിൽ കയറിയാൽ ഡെപ്യൂട്ടി കളക്ടർ വരെ എത്താം എന്നുള്ള ചാൻസ് ഒക്കെ ഉള്ള ജോബുകളാണ് സോ അങ്ങനത്തെ ഒരു സിറ്റുവേഷനിൽ ഞാൻ ആദ്യം എനിക്ക് വന്ന ജോബിൽ ആദ്യം കിട്ടിയ അപ്പോയിൻമെന്റ് ഓർഡറിൽ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തു റവന്യൂ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റിലെ ക്ലർക്ക് ആയിരുന്നു പക്ഷെ ഒരു വിത്തിൻ സിക്സ് മന്ത്സ് എനിക്ക് മനസ്സിലായി ഇത് എനിക്ക് പറ്റിയ ഒരു ഫീൽഡ് അല്ല കാരണം ഐ വാസ് നോട്ട് സാറ്റിസ്ഫൈഡ് ദർ സോ ഐ റിയലൈസ് ദാറ്റ് ഈവൻ ഇഫ് ഐ ബിക്കം എൻ ഐ എസ് ഐ വിൽ ബി ഡൂയിങ് എൻ ഗ്ലോറിഫൈഡ് ക്ലറിക്കൽ ജോബ് സോ ഐ വാസ് ഐ എം നോട്ട് ഇൻ ഡു ഇറ്റ് ഐ എം നോട്ട് ടെലിങ് ദാറ്റ്സ് നോട്ട് എ ബാഡ് ജോബ് ഓർ എനിത്തിങ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് എ ജോബ് വിച്ച് ക്യാൻ ഡു ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് ഗുഡ് ടു ദ സൊസൈറ്റി പക്ഷേ ഞാൻ അതിന് ഫിറ്റായ ഒരാളല്ല എന്ന് എനിക്ക് അപ്പോൾ മനസ്സിലായി ആ സിക്സ് മന്ത്സ് തന്നെ അത് പഠിപ്പിച്ചു ദെൻ ഓക്കെ ഞാൻ അപ്പോൾ പിന്നെ അന്ന് ഇന്നത്തെ പോലെ ഇന്റർനെറ്റ് ഉണ്ട് പക്ഷെ എൻ്റെ വീട്ടിൽ അന്ന് കമ്പ്യൂട്ടറോ ഇന്റർനെറ്റോ ഒന്നുമില്ല ഇപ്പോഴും കുട്ടികൾക്ക് കുറച്ചുകൂടെ ഇന്റർനെറ്റിന്റെ ഈ ഭൂം വന്ന കാരണം കാര്യങ്ങളെ കുറിച്ച് അറിയാം സോ പിന്നെ ഞാൻ എക്സാംസ് എഴുതാൻ തുടങ്ങി ആക്ച്വലി നമുക്കിപ്പോൾ റിസർച്ച് ചെയ്യണമെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നമ്മുടെ വീട്ടിൽ നിന്ന് കാശ് ഒന്നും പോകേണ്ട കാര്യമില്ല എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നു പലർക്കും അങ്ങനെ ഒരു വിചാരമുണ്ട് പി എച്ച് ഡി ചെയ്യണമെങ്കിൽ നമ്മുടെ കയ്യിൽ നിന്ന് പൈസ കൊടുത്ത് പി എച്ച് ഡി ചെയ്യണം അതിന്റെ ആവശ്യമില്ല ഇഫ് യു ഹാവ് ട്രൂ പാഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഇഫ് യു നോ ദ സ്റ്റഫ് ഇഫ് യു ക്യാൻ ക്ലിയർ ദ എക്സാംസ് ഇന്ത്യയിൽ ഒരുപാട് ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റീസ് ഉണ്ട് റിസർച്ച് ചെയ്യാൻ നമുക്ക് സ്റ്റൈപ്പൻഡ് കിട്ടും സ്റ്റൈപ്പൻഡ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് ബാഡ് അന്ന് കുറച്ച് കുറവായിരുന്നു പക്ഷെ ഇപ്പോൾ സ്റ്റൈപ്പൻഡ് അത്യാവശ്യം ഒരു എഞ്ചിനീയർക്ക് ഒരു സ്റ്റാർട്ടിങ് ജോബിൽ കിട്ടുന്ന സാലറിയെക്കാളും സ്റ്റൈപ്പൻഡ് ഉണ്ടെന്ന് തന്നെയാണ് എൻ്റെ വിശ്വാസം മേ ബി അഞ്ജനയ്ക്ക് വേണമെങ്കിൽ അതിൽ കുറച്ചുകൂടെ പറയാൻ പറ്റും അഞ്ജനയാണ് നമ്മുടെ ഗ്രൂപ്പിൽ റീസെൻ്റ്ലി പി എച്ച് ഡി ചെയ്ത ഒരാൾ so appo naan exams ezhudi so i cleared some central uh, government exams i got into uh, a phd appo adana uh, phd cheyan namukku pratheeche cash onnum venda namukku aa exams okke clear cheyan pattumengil ishtam pole exams um means india il iits und icers und trivandrath iist vannu annu thonnu undayirunnilla appo adana namukku endha paraya namukku കഴിവുണ്ട് നമ്മൾ പഠിക്കാൻ തയ്യാറാണ് ഹാർഡ് വർക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ തയ്യാറാണെങ്കിൽ കാശ് ഒരു പ്രശ്നമല്ല പി എച്ച് ഡി ചെയ്യാൻ ബിക്കോസ് പി എച്ച് ഡി ഈസ് ലൈക്ക് എനി അതർ ജോബ് യു വിൽ ബി ട്രീറ്റഡ് ലൈക്ക് മെഡിക്കൽ ഇൻഷുറൻസ് ഉണ്ടാവും ഒരു താമസിക്കാൻ ഹോസ്റ്റൽ ഉണ്ടാവും ഇതെല്ലാം നമുക്ക് കിട്ടും മാസം സ്റ്റൈപ്പൻഡും കിട്ടും സോ പി എച്ച് ഡി ചെയ്യാൻ ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റീസ് ഉണ്ട് എനി വൺ ക്യാൻ പെർസ്യൂ ദാറ്റ് പക്ഷേ യു നീഡ് ടു ഹാവ് ദ പാഷൻ ഇറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് നോട്ട് ലൈക്ക് എ നയൻ ടു ഫോർ ജോബ് പി എച്ച് ഡി ഈസ് സംതിങ് ലൈക്ക് വിച്ച് ഒക്കുപൈസ് യു Uh, because research research and the barnal other 24 hour job pole yana you may not be physically present but uh, your mind will be occupied in it so adinde tayarulla avarku opportunities undu appo njan eppozhum enna kurichu vicharikkaru einstein polum oru clerk a irunnu joli edittund ennittana einstein maariyathu so patent office la clerk a irunnu at some point einstein pinne njan oru revenue office la clerk aayathu oru mosham karyamayi enikku irikkilum thonarilla pinne oru karyam kodi undu njan orike ecg sudarshana meet cheyidu പലർക്കും അറിയാമായിരിക്കും ഇ സി ജി സുദർശൻ നമ്മുടെ കേരളത്തിലെ സർക്കാർ സ്കൂളിൽ പഠിച്ചിട്ട് ടാക്യൂൺസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന സബട്ടോമിക് ഐ മീൻ ടാക്യൂൺസിനെ കുറിച്ച് ആദ്യം പറഞ്ഞത് പുള്ളിയാണ് നോബൽ പ്രൈസിന്റെ അടുത്തുവരെ എത്തിയിട്ട് കിട്ടാതെ പോയ ഒരാളാണ് ഇ സി ജി സുദർശൻ പുള്ളിയെ ഞാൻ ഒരിക്കൽ മീറ്റ് ചെയ്തു മീറ്റ് ചെയ്തപ്പോൾ ഞാൻ ഇങ്ങനെ നെയ്യാറ്റിങ്കരയാണ് വീട് എന്നൊക്കെ സംസാരിച്ചപ്പോൾ പുള്ളി ഭയങ്കര എന്തൂസിയാസ്റ്റിക്ക ഒരാളാണ് സയൻസിനെ കുറിച്ച് മാത്രല്ല വേദാസിനെ കുറിച്ച് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ റിയൽ എസ്റ്റേറ്റിനെ കുറിച്ച് ഇങ്ങനെ ഒരുപാട് ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റ് ഉള്ള ഒരു വ്യക്തിയാണ് അപ്പൊ പുള്ളി എന്നോട് ഞാൻ ഇങ്ങനെ ഒരു ജോലി ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ പുള്ളി പറഞ്ഞു ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എൻ എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് ഇൻ ലൈഫ് അങ്ങനെ എടുത്താൽ മതി ആ കളഞ്ഞ സമയം ഒരു മോശമായിട്ടൊന്നും വിചാരിക്കണ്ട സോ ദാറ്റ്സ് മൈ ആൻസർ യു ഹാവ് ദ റിയൽ പാഷൻ ദേർ ആർ വേസ് വെരി ഇൻസ്പയറിംഗ് സ്റ്റോറി ആക്ച്വലി മെനി പീപ്പിൾ ഡോണ്ട് റിയലൈസ് ഹൗ ഹൗ ഗുഡ് എ സ്റ്റൈഫ് ആൻഡ് യു വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് ഇൻ ദാ ഐ വെൻ ഫോർ പി എച്ച് ഡി ഓൾറെഡി ഇൻ 19 you know I, and i'll give you a secret i actually went to do a master study because of the stipend you know <laughs> because it was not there are not many jobs available for a civil engineer in 1988 uh, 86 and if you wrote gate you got i think 1800 rupees or something at that time and then i went on to do my phd and then it was 2400 which was fine you know in the class le chele gujaratil nalla chella kuttigal adil ninnu panam edutha share le invest cheyyaru
ഗ്രാജുവേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ആളുകളുടെ വെല്ലുവിളികളെ പറ്റി ലെക്ചർ കൊടുക്കുക എന്ന് അപ്പൊ അതിന്റെ അവസാനം ഞാൻ ഒരു ചോദ്യം ചോദിക്കും നിങ്ങൾക്ക് എത്ര പേർക്ക് ലിങ്ക്ഡ് ഇൻ അക്കൗണ്ട് ഉണ്ട് എന്ന് ചാറ്റിൽ ഒന്ന് ടൈപ്പ് ചെയ്യണമെന്ന് പറയും ഇപ്പൊ നിങ്ങൾ ഇപ്പൊ ഈ ഇത് ലിസൺ ചെയ്യുന്ന ആളുകൾ ഒന്ന് ടൈപ്പ് ചെയ്താൽ കൊള്ളാമായിരിക്കും ഈ നിങ്ങളുടെ യൂട്യൂബിലാണെങ്കിലും ഫേസ്ബുക്കിലാണെങ്കിലും ഒന്ന് ചാറ്റ് ചെയ്താൽ കൊള്ളാം അപ്പൊ അപ്പൊ ഞാൻ കാണുന്ന എന്താ പറയുന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് കോളേജിലാണെങ്കിൽ യെസ് 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 എന്നാണ് വരുന്നത് സയൻസ് കോളേജുകളിലാണെങ്കിൽ നോ 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 എന്നാണ് വരുന്നത് എന്തുകൊണ്ടാണ് സംഭവിക്കുന്നത് എനിക്കറിയില്ല പക്ഷെ അങ്ങനെയാണ് ഇത് ഒരേ ലോകമാണ് ഫേസ് എല്ലാവർക്കും അവൈലബിൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ളത് ഇതിൽ ലിങ്ക്ഡിൻ ഇല്ലാത്ത ആരെങ്കിലും ഞങ്ങളെ ലിസൺ ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഇന്ന് തന്നെ പോയി ഒരു ലിങ്ക്ഡിൻ അക്കൗണ്ട് ഉണ്ടാക്കുക ഈ ഇതുപോലെ ഇരിക്കുന്ന വളരെ ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റിംഗ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ആളുകളുണ്ട് അവർക്ക് എല്ലാം നിങ്ങൾ ഫ്രണ്ട് റിക്വസ്റ്റ് അയക്കുക അവരെ നിങ്ങളുടെ ഡൊമൈനിലുള്ള ആളുകളാണെങ്കിൽ അവർ തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും റിസീവ് ചെയ്യും അങ്ങനെ നിങ്ങളുടെ നെറ്റ്വർക്ക് ബിൽഡ് ചെയ്യാം നജീബ് നജീബിനോട് ചോദിച്ചു ചോദിക്കുന്നതിന് മുമ്പ് ഈ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ ട്വന്റി വൺ സിയുടെ ഒരു ഒബ്ജക്റ്റീവ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് നമ്മളുടെ സയൻസ് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ ഒന്ന് എൻഹാൻസ് ചെയ്യുക എന്നുള്ളതാണല്ലോ ഒന്ന് ഓക്യുമെന്റ് ചെയ്യുക എന്നുള്ളതാണ് അപ്പൊ അതിനുവേണ്ടി നിങ്ങൾ എന്തൊക്കെയാണ് ചെയ്യുന്നതെന്ന് ഒന്ന് എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ ചെയ്താൽ കൊള്ളാം താങ്ക്സ് മുരളിയേട്ട അത് അത് വളരെ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു കാര്യമാണ് നമ്മൾ ഈ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ ട്വന്റി വൺസ് ഈ തുടങ്ങാനുള്ളൊരു കാരണം തന്നെ നമുക്ക് ഒരുപാട് പേർക്ക് ഇത്തരത്തിൽ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷനിലും എഞ്ചിനീയറിങ്ങിലും അങ്ങനെ ഒരുപാട് അക്കഡമിയിലും ഇൻഡസ്ട്രിയിലൊക്കെ എക്സ്പേർട്ടീസ് ഉള്ള ഒരുപാട് പേര് ലോകത്ത് പലയിടത്തും മലയാളികളുണ്ട് അപ്പൊ നമുക്ക് എല്ലാവർക്കും കൂടെ കുറച്ച് പേർക്ക് കൂടിയിട്ട് നമുക്ക് നമ്മുടെ നാടിന് വേണ്ടി കേരളത്തിലെ ഹയർ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷന് വേണ്ടി എന്ത് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും എന്ന് നമ്മൾ പലപ്പോഴും പലരുടെയും ഡിസ്കഷനിൽ ഞങ്ങളൊക്കെ തമ്മിൽ ഡിസ്കഷനിൽ വന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് അപ്പൊ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് തോന്നി ഒരു ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഉണ്ടാക്കുകയാണെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് നമ്മുടെ എക്സ്പെർട്ടീസ് ഒക്കെ പലർക്കും പല മാതിരിയുള്ള എക്സ്പെർട്ടീസ് അല്ലേ ഉള്ളത് അതെല്ലാം നമുക്ക് ഉപയോഗിക്കാൻ പറ്റും ഇപ്പൊ തന്നെ ഒരു ഈ എൻ ഇ പി പുതിയ വിദ്യാഭ്യാസ നയമൊക്കെ വന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് പക്ഷേ കേരളം പോലൊരു സംസ്ഥാനത്തിന്റെ വലിയൊരു ചാലഞ്ച് ആയിട്ട് എനിക്ക് എപ്പോഴും തോന്നിയിട്ടുള്ളത് നമ്മുടെ റിസോഴ്സസ് വളരെ ലിമിറ്റഡ് ആണ് അതാരെയും കുറ്റമല്ല അപ്പൊ നമുക്ക് അത്രയും ഇല്ലല്ലോ നമ്മള് നമ്മള് ഒരുപാട് ഡെവലപ്ഡ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു രാജ്യമല്ല അപ്പൊ നമ്മുടെ കയ്യിലുള്ള റിസോഴ്സസ് വളരെ കുറച്ചുള്ളപ്പോ അത് വളരെ നന്നായിട്ട് ഉപയോഗിക്കാൻ നമുക്ക് പറ്റണം അപ്പൊ അതുകൊണ്ട് നമ്മുടെ പുറത്തുള്ള ആളുകൾ കേരളത്തിൽ തന്നെയുള്ളവരും കേരളത്തിന് പുറത്ത് ഇന്ത്യയിലുള്ളവരും ഇന്ത്യക്ക് പുറത്തുള്ളവരും എല്ലാവരും കൂടെ നമ്മുടെയൊക്കെ എക്സ്പെർട്ടീസ് കുറച്ച് കൂടിയാൽ കുറച്ച് സമയം നമുക്ക് നമ്മുടെ നാടിന്റെ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ വേണ്ടി സ്പെൻഡ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുകയാണെങ്കിൽ കേരളത്തിന് അസാധ്യ പൊട്ടൻഷ്യലാണുള്ളത് അതാണ് നമ്മൾ അങ്ങനത്തെ ആ ഒരു പൊട്ടൻഷ്യൽ ടാപ്പ് ചെയ്യുക എന്നുള്ളതാണ് നമ്മുടെ ഒരു 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 ബേസിക് കോൺസെപ്റ്റ് ഈ ഗ്രൂപ്പ് നമ്മൾ ഉണ്ടാക്കിയപ്പോൾ അതിനകത്ത് ഇപ്പൊ നമ്മള് ഒരു തുടക്കം എന്ന നിലയിൽ നമ്മളിപ്പോ ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഈ കോവിഡ് സമയത്ത് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ ഓൺലൈനായി അപ്പൊ നമുക്ക് കുറച്ച് റിസോഴ്സസ് പഠിപ്പിക്കുന്നവർക്ക് ഭയങ്കര ചാലഞ്ച് ആണത് ഈ ഈ ഓൺലൈൻ പഠിപ്പിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ പഠിപ്പിക്കുന്നവർക്കും പഠിക്കുന്നവർക്കും കുറച്ച് ക്യൂറേറ്റഡ് കണ്ടന്റ് ഉണ്ടാക്കാൻ നമ്മളെ കൂടി പറ്റുമോ എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഫസ്റ്റ് അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ തുടങ്ങിയിട്ടുണ്ട് നമ്മൾ ഫിസിക്സിലാണ് തുടങ്ങിയിരിക്കുന്നത് ദിലീപ് മാമ്പിള്ളി ഹസ്ബൻഡ് എ ഗ്രേറ്റ് ജോബ് അപ്പൊ നമ്മുടെ വെബ്സൈറ്റിൽ പോയാൽ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് കാണാം ഫിസിക്സിലുള്ള കണ്ടന്റ് ഞങ്ങൾ ഒരുപാട് ഉണ്ടാക്കിയിട്ടുണ്ട് ഞങ്ങൾ കെമിസ്ട്രിയും മാത്തും ബയോളജി അങ്ങനെ എല്ലാം ഉണ്ടാക്കണമെന്നാണ് നമ്മൾ വിചാരിക്കുന്നത് ആൻഡ് വി വെൽക്കം ഓൾ ഓഫ് യു എല്ലാവരെയും ഞങ്ങൾ വെൽക്കം ചെയ്ത് ഇങ്ങോട്ട് ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഗ്രൂപ്പിലേക്ക് വരികയും നിങ്ങളുടെ എക്സ്പെർട്ടീസ് നമ്മുടെ നാടിന് വേണ്ടി ഉപയോഗിക്കണം എന്നാണ് ഞങ്ങളുടെ വിനീതമായ ഒരു ഒരു അഭ്യർത്ഥന ഇതിനകത്തുള്ളത് താങ്ക് യു നജീബ് ഈ പറഞ്ഞ പോയിന്റ് ഞാൻ ഒന്നും കൂടി എംഫസൈസ് ചെയ്യാണ് ഈ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ ട്വന്റി വൺ സി എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഒരു എക്സ്ക്ലൂസീവ് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് അല്ല നിങ്ങളിൽ ഈ ഒബ്ജക്റ്റീവുമായിട്ട് ചേർന്ന് നിൽക്കാൻ താല്പര്യമുള്ള ആളുകൾ അധ്യാപകരാണെങ്കിലും റിസർച്ചേഴ്സ് ആണെങ്കിലും തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും ഇതിൽ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്യണം നമുക്ക് ടുഗദർ
നമ്മൾ ഇന്റർനാഷണലി പറയുന്ന റിസർച്ച് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റികൾ എന്നാണ് അപ്പോൾ റിസർച്ച് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റികൾക്ക് പ്രധാനമായിട്ടും ഞാൻ കാണുന്നത് മൂന്ന് ക്വാളിറ്റിയാണ് ഒന്ന് ഫണ്ടമെന്റൽ ഒരു ഒരു റിസർച്ച് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റിയിൽ ഒരു കഴിവുള്ള ഒരാൾക്ക് ഈ ലോകത്ത് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ ബെസ്റ്റ് ഇൻ ദ വേൾഡ് ആവാനുള്ള എല്ലാ ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റീസും ഉള്ള ഒരു സ്ഥലമാണ് ഒരു പ്രോപ്പർ റിസർച്ച് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി അത് ഏത് ഫീൽഡ് ആയിക്കോട്ടെ നിങ്ങൾ അതിനെ എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് എന്നോ അതിനെ കെമിസ്ട്രി എന്നോ ഫിസിക്സ് എന്നോ ഒന്നും വിളിക്കില്ല ടാലന്റ് ഉള്ള ഹാർഡ് വർക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ തയ്യാറുള്ള ഏതൊരാൾക്കും ആ ആളുടെ കഴിവിന്റെ മാക്സിമത്തിൽ എത്താൻ കഴിയുന്ന എല്ലാ വിധത്തിലുള്ള യുനോ സയൻറ്റിഫിക് ടെക്നോളജിക്കൽ അങ്ങനെ എന്ത് സാധനം എടുത്താലും ഉള്ള ഒരു സപ്പോർട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ഒരു സ്ഥലമാണ് ഒരു ഒരു സെന്റർ ഓഫ് എക്സലൻസ് ആണ് റിസർച്ച് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി അതാണ് ഒന്നാമത്തെ ഒരു കാര്യം രണ്ടാമത്തെ ഒരു കാര്യം റിസർച്ച് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റികൾ കോൺസെൻട്രേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഏറ്റവും കൂടുതൽ ക്രിയേഷൻ ഓഫ് നോളജിലാണ് നമ്മൾ മിക്കവാറും നമ്മൾ കോൺസെൻട്രേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഡിസെമിനേഷൻ ഓഫ് നോളജ് അത് ഞാൻ കുറ്റമായിട്ട് പറയാനില്ല നമുക്ക് ഒരുപാട് കോളേജുകൾ ഉള്ളതുകൊണ്ട് നമ്മൾ നമ്മുടെ ആദ്യ സ്റ്റെപ്പ് എന്ന നിലയിൽ അതാണ് ഇപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നത് കൂടുതൽ ഡിസെമിനേഷൻ ഓഫ് നോളജ് നമ്മൾ കുട്ടികൾ പഠിപ്പിക്കുക പഠിപ്പിക്കുക എന്നുള്ളതാണ് നമ്മൾ ഇപ്പൊ ചെയ്യുന്നത് പക്ഷെ ഹയർ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ വേൾഡിൽ എവിടെ എടുത്താലും ഇപ്പൊ ഏത് ഇപ്പൊ ഡെവലപ്പ് വേൾഡിൽ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ എവിടെ എടുത്താലും ഇപ്പൊ അത് യു എസ് ആയാലും യൂറോപ്പ് ആയാലും ജപ്പാൻ ആയാലും ചൈന ആയാലും കൊറിയ ആയാലും ഇവിടെയൊക്കെ നമുക്കറിയാം റിസർച്ച് ക്രിയേഷൻ ഓഫ് നോളജിനാണ് അവർ കൂടുതൽ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് കൊടുക്കുന്നത് റിസർച്ച് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റികൾ അതാണ് സെക്കൻഡ് പോയിന്റ് തേർഡ് പോയിന്റ് ഇപ്പൊ ദിലീപ് പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ ഏറ്റവും ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള കാര്യമാണ് ഈ മൾട്ടി ഡിസിപ്ലിനറി ആയിരിക്കുക എന്നുള്ളത് എല്ലാം അവിടെ ഉണ്ടാവുക എന്നുള്ളത് വളരെ പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട ഒരു കാര്യമാണ് അതിന് ഞാനൊരു ഒരു ക്ലാസിക് എക്സാമ്പിൾ പറയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഞാൻ പി എച്ച് ഡി ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ഞാൻ ഞാൻ ബയോഫ്യൂൽസിലെ പി എച്ച് ഡി ചെയ്തേ അപ്പൊ ഞങ്ങൾ ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഈ സ്വിച്ച് ഗ്രാസ് ഗ്രാസുകൾ പല മാതിരിയുള്ള പുല്ലുകളും പല മാതിരിയുള്ള വുഡ് മരങ്ങളുടെ ഒക്കെ ഇതൊക്കെ എടുത്തിട്ട് അതിനെ നമ്മൾ തെർമോ കെമിക്കൽ കൺവേർഷൻ ഉപയോഗിച്ച് കെമിക്കൽ എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് ഉപയോഗിച്ചിട്ട് നമ്മൾ അതിനെ ലിക്വിഡ് ഫ്യൂൽസ് ആക്കി മാറ്റുകയാണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പൊ കെമിക്കൽ എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് ആണ് ഞാൻ ചെയ്യുന്നത് പക്ഷേ ഈ ബയോമാസിലെ അനാലിസിസിനുള്ള എക്സ്പെർട്ടീസ് ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഗ്രൂപ്പിലില്ല അപ്പൊ എനിക്ക് എല്ലാ ഈ ബയോമാസിന്റെ ഫൈൻ ഡീറ്റെയിൽഡ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള അനാലിസിസ് ഒക്കെ പക്കേന്ന് ചെയ്തു തരാൻ ഇഷ്ടംപോലെ ആളെ ഞങ്ങളുടെ അഗ്രോണമി ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ ബെസ്റ്റ് അഗ്രോണമി ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ഉണ്ട് അപ്പൊ അഗ്രോണമി ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് അത് വളരെ നിസ്സാരമായിട്ട് എനിക്ക് അതെല്ലാം ചെയ്തു തന്നു എന്റെ പി എച്ച് ഡി വളരെ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു കാര്യമാണ് അത് അതുപോലെ പല റിയാക്ഷൻ മെക്കാനിസം ആ നമ്മുടെ കെമിസ്റ്റ് ആ കെമിക്കൽ എഞ്ചിനീയർ പല റിയാക്ഷൻ മെക്കാനിസം എനിക്ക് പലപ്പോഴും മനസ്സിലാവില്ല കോർഡിനേഷൻ കെമിസ്ട്രി അങ്ങനെ ഇപ്പൊ ഒരുപാട് സാധനങ്ങൾ ഉണ്ടല്ലോ ഇതൊക്കെ ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഉക്രൈൻ ഒരു കെമിസ്ട്രി ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ആയിരുന്നു ഒരു 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 പ്രൊഫസറും ഒരു പോസ്റ്റ് ഡോക്യുമെന്റ് ഒരുപാട് ഹെൽപ്പ് ചെയ്തു ആ കെമിസ്ട്രി ആ റിയാക്ഷൻ മെക്കാനിസം ഐഡന്റിഫൈ ചെയ്യാനോ അങ്ങനത്തെ കാര്യങ്ങൾക്കൊക്കെ പിന്നെ സത്യം പറയാം നമ്മളിത് ഇതിന്റെ ഈ ടെക്നോ എക്കണോമിക്സ് എന്ന സാധനമുണ്ടല്ലോ ഒരു പ്രോജക്ട് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ അത് വയബിൾ ആണോ അല്ലെന്നും കൂടി നമ്മൾ നമ്മൾ നമ്മുടെ സ്പോൺസേഴ്സിന് കാണിച്ചു കൊടുക്കണമല്ലോ നമുക്കിവിടെ എക്കണോമിക്സ് അറിയാം ഞാൻ എക്കണോമിക്സ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റിലെ ഡോക്ടർ മിറനോസ്കി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ മൂപ്പരാണ് എന്റെ ആ ടെക്നോ എക്കണോമിക്സ് ഉക്രൈനായിട്ട് വർക്ക്ഔട്ട് ചെയ്ത് കാണിക്കാൻ എന്നെ സഹായിച്ചത് അദ്ദേഹമാണ് അപ്പൊ എക്കണോമിക്സ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് അവിടെ ഉണ്ട് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ ബെസ്റ്റ് എന്നിട്ട് ഇതൊക്കെ കഴിഞ്ഞ പേപ്പർ എഴുതി തുടങ്ങിയപ്പോ എന്റെ എന്റെ പ്രൊഫസർ ഡോക്ടർ ബ്രൗൺ പറഞ്ഞു നജീബ് എഴുത്ത് പോരെ എങ്ങനെയൊന്നും അല്ല ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് എഴുതേണ്ടത് യു യു ഹാവ് ടു ബി മച്ച് ബെറ്റർ എന്റെ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് അന്നൊക്കെ പൊട്ടയായിരുന്നു നമ്മൾ മലയാളം മീഡിയത്തിലൊക്കെ പഠിച്ചു വന്നില്ല അത്ര എളുപ്പമല്ല ഞാൻ നേരെ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റിൽ പോയി ടെക്നിക്കൽ റൈറ്റിംഗിൽ കോഴ്സ് എടുത്തു ഞാൻ എന്റെ കാര്യമാണ് പറയുന്നത് അപ്പൊ എനിക്ക് കിട്ടിയേക്കുന്ന ഹെൽപ്പ് മറ്റ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് കിട്ടിയേക്കുന്ന ഹെൽപ്പ് അസാധ്യാണെന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഓഫ്കോഴ്സ് നമ്മുടെ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് നമുക്ക് ഹെൽപ്പ് ഉണ്ട് ഇഷ്ടം പോലെ പക്ഷെ മറ്റ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റുകളിൽ നിന്നുള്ള അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് എനിക്ക് ഞാൻ എന്റെ പി എച്ച് ഡി വളരെ നാല് കൊല്ലോട് തീർത്തു അത് എന്റെ കഴിവിനേക്കാൾ കൂടുതൽ മറ്റുള്ളവർ തന്നെ ഹെൽപ്പ് ആണെന്നാണ്
<laughs> I want to ask Prashant. He, you know, over the last ten years, if you if you see, you know, initially there was a massive shift from, you know, in colleges towards engineering colleges. But in a few years, I actually see that people, you know, engineering has lost its sheen, so to say. You know, there are too many engineers and too many engineering colleges. So I want to ask you: Are you seeing more interest among students? Um, to come back to science, are good students with higher marks coming to science? Is the uh, trend in Undo in the Narayana? Thank you, Murli, for the question. Uh, yes, the last 10 years I had been in this college. And when I came to college and uh, when I sat with the admissions, I found that uh, to my surprise, there was great interest being shown in uh, both science stream as well as in humanities. That was a real surprise to me. And that is still sustaining. Uh, and especially in chemistry, in mathematics, in physics. As life sciences, it is less, but I'm not telling it is not there. It is still there. Uh, I'll just add one more thing for your information, uh, since I was following this discussion. Uh, what I found, uh, found is that um, the students are not being uh, helped to find a real interest in pursuing science after that. Maybe they come with great enthusiasm and when I ask them, most of them say, I want to become a faculty, I want to become a teacher, I want to do research. But then usually they end up doing a research for, uh, for a PhD and end up there. So beyond that, uh, to pursue science is not to be found very much in our circle. Maybe our systems do not promote that much. So my question, I was asking a question uh, privately. What can we do to Gener generate interest in pursuing science. That, that's a very tough task. Now, I, fundamentals are required, but then applying uh, appli applying uh, science to life, application, skill in doing things with science, other than mugging up things and doing the lab work and getting scores. Now, I think that the horizon is getting very, very limited uh, to the students. I, or, there is some hope that after degrees, a few students uh, seem to be aspiring to do research elsewhere, but they are very, very few in number. Uh, and uh, this is to be generated. So that is a clue we should get from uh, such a discussion. Thank you, Father, um, for your insight. Um, and also this interesting question as to, you know, of the people, as, as I mentioned, um, you know, 250 arts and science colleges in Kerala, large number of people graduating in science, but majority of them not pursuing science. So this is something which we are trying to change collectively. And this, the effort which we are making is, uh, is a humble beginning. But in addition to this webinar, of course, we'll have more webinars. We are creating curated content and that also will continue, but that's really not our final objective. Our final goal is to, is to embed in our science education more um, you know, opportunities, more continuity, more passion. And to do that, you need to, first of all, inspire the teachers, but also you have to create opportunities for the students who are graduating. Because if you graduate, you know, if you teach very well, you know, ignite their passion, and then you leave them hanging, that's not good. Well, you know, my, in my view is that this post-COVID world the situation could actually improve because you now will be able to connect to the world without leaving you know, our um, place in, in Kerala. So a lot of research could also be outsourced in a way that we can do a lot more research sitting here because the, the unit cost of doing research is much less. Of course, you need a critical mass, et cetera. So this is a cost which I am actually, uh, this is a point which I'm coming to Anjana you know, we are having this on, online education revolution sweeping the world. You know, I, I, I was reading a UNESCO study, 1.7 billion students, their education were impacted between March and April. And in every country, you know, be it you know, in Africa, Asia, US, wherever, they have to resort to some sort of an online thing, some places exclusively online, some places hybrid. What is your take? Will this online revolution help science or hinder science? 
ഓൺലൈൻ റെവല്യൂഷൻ ഇപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ സയൻസ് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷന്റെ കാര്യത്തിലാണെങ്കിൽ നേരത്തെ നമ്മുടെ സ്റ്റുഡൻസിൽ നിന്നും ഇത്രയും ഓൺലൈൻ കോഴ്സസ് അവൈലബിൾ ആണ് എന്നുള്ളൊരു അവർക്ക് അതിനെ കുറിച്ച് അറിയില്ലായിരുന്നു അപ്പോൾ ഇപ്പോൾ ധാരാളം ആൾക്കാർക്ക് അതിനെ കുറിച്ചൊരു ആക്സസ് കിട്ടുന്നുണ്ട് കൂടുതൽ സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് അത് പഠിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് അവർക്ക് കൂടുതൽ എന്താ പറയുക ഒരു ഹയർ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ ഇപ്പോൾ എം ഐ ടി എം ഐ ടി കോഴ്സസ് ഓഫർ ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് നമ്മുടെ സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് അത് പഠിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് ഇപ്പോൾ എൻ പി ടെലിൻ്റെ കോഴ്സസ് ഉണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ ധാരാളം സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് അതിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് ഓഫ് ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് സോ ഇൻ എ വേ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് വെരി ഗുഡ് അവർ സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് ആർ ഗെറ്റിംഗ് മോർ ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റീസ് ആൻഡ് ദ ആർ ഗെറ്റിംഗ് മോർ ഐഡിയ അബൌട്ട് ഓൺലൈൻ കോഴ്സസ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഗുഡ് ഇൻ വൺ വേ ആൻഡ് വെൻ കംസ് ടു റിസർച്ച് ഓൾറെഡി നമ്മുടെ കെമിസ്ട്രി റിസർച്ചിലായാലും ഒരു പത്ത് വർഷം മുമ്പേ ആണെങ്കിൽ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു രണ്ടായിരത്തിൽ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആ ടൈമിലൊക്കെ ആകുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് ഒരു അൻപത് കോമ്പിനേഷൻ ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് വേറെ ഓപ്ഷൻ ഒന്നും ഇല്ല ഈ അൻപത് കോമ്പിനേഷൻ നമ്മൾ എന്താ പറയുക മാനുവലി ലാബിൽ ചെയ്യുക എന്നിട്ട് ഏതാണ് വർക്ക് ചെയ്യുന്നത് എന്ന് നമ്മൾ കണ്ടുപിടിക്കാം നമുക്ക് വേറെ ഓപ്ഷൻ ഇല്ലായിരുന്നു പക്ഷേ ഇപ്പോൾ ലാസ്റ്റ് ഒരു ടെൻ ഇയേഴ്സിൽ മെഷീൻ ലേണിംഗ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ തിയറിക്കൽ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ കമ്പ്യൂട്ടേഷൻ കെമിസ്ട്രിയിലൊക്കെ വന്ന ആ ഒരു വലിയ ഒരു എന്താ പറയുക കുരിശാട്ടം എന്ന് തന്നെ പറയാം അപ്പോൾ ആ ഡിഫറൻസ് കൊണ്ട് നമുക്ക് ഇപ്പോൾ ഒരു അമ്പത് കോമ്പിനേഷൻ ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ വി ക്യാൻ പ്രെഡിക്റ്റ് and we can understand uh, which one will work so oru science research nokki kanna lab work ekka namukku oru kore korakkan kaiyittunde because of this endha uh, paraya with the help of computers and with the help of online system but still uh, in one way nammada uh, chemistry research alum lady physics idu pole lab work necessary aayittulla vishayangalle namukku lab il work cheyadirikkya nadu 100% practical aayittulla kaariyalla നമ്മളെപ്പോഴായാലും ലാബിൽ വർക്ക് ചെയ്യണം ഇപ്പൊ ഞങ്ങളെയൊക്കെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം ആറു മാസത്തോളം വർക്ക് മുടങ്ങിപ്പോയി മുടങ്ങിപ്പോയി എന്ന് തന്നെ പറയാം അപ്പൊ അതിനുശേഷം ഞങ്ങൾ വന്ന് തന്നെ ചെയ്യേണ്ടി വന്നു അപ്പൊ ഓൺലൈൻ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ ഹെൽപ്പ് ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് ഒരു പരിധി വരെ ബട്ടിൽ ഓഫ്ലൈൻ ആയിട്ടുള്ള ആക്സസിബിലിറ്റിയും വളരെ ഇമ്പോർട്ടന്റ് ആണ് is that a lot of things will now get into simulation you know even even experiment even scientific experiments will get into simulation so instead of actually doing things in the ground you know in the, the lab with hand you may be able to do it and if you are actually able to create such super labs where experiment can be done by simulation then it can be done from anywhere so then the comparative advantage of being in geneva in cern to do research will go and that may actually help um but i want to ask dilip a question which is very close to your heart and my heart and all of our heart um is about is about science and scientific temper so you know we have lot of people doing science but somehow proportionately the scientific temper seems to be not growing and every day you know you you have a fake science message coming around and you know yesterday there was a message from somebody that if you have a glucose thing up your nose corona will go and you know my very educated friends actually forwarded to me and then they said you know this was shared by a million people i said that's the first indication that's fake because a very genuine scientific article will never get that type of thing you know if something genuine had come it would have gone to thousand people so philip my question is how can we increase scientific temper among the society but in particular at least among the science students yeah this is a very valid question uh, we have to actually start sci- building up scientific temper from our classroom itself for example it should be part of our curriculum for example when we discuss scientific uh, concepts in the class the teacher should also discuss about the not only the concept but also the misconceptions and uh, relates to science uh, to, to the classroom content and it will be very interesting uh, for the class itself and make the class dynamic and the student starts to you know even shy students starts to interact now for example uh, when we discuss avogadro number there is a very famous pseudo science like homeopathy is very connected to that or when we discuss uh, electromagnetic waves the sh- teacher should discuss about whether mobile phone radiation uh, is a danger or my micro- microwave ovens and so you can in a chemistry class uh, just this example about uh, glucose drop and uh, corona virus i mean 
if you train the students to uh, think logically with their scientific knowledge, then they immediately doubt uh, such uh, WhatsApp messages and so on. So we should start from the uh, classroom and uh, in the campus, there should be seminars and uh, programs and students should uh, discuss science outside their curriculum. And then, yeah, the problem is solved. And scientific temper means you create a value for life, women's rights, social rights, everything from, you know, the scientific temper and the uh, open thinking. So, yeah. Thank you, Dilip. Um, you know, indeed, I think is something which we um, all agree that we should all aspect to have a little, a little bit more scientific temper in ourselves, but also in the society. I want to uh, remind those uh, who are watching that uh, you must complete the um, the feedback form, and then you will all receive um, your certificates um, from um, Tavera College. So please complete the, the feedback form, uh, which um, has been mailed uh, to you. I, uh, you know, I have now good news and bad news for the panel. The good news is that 90% of those who, those people who started with us are still watching the program, which is exceptional. Now I do you know, webinars all the time. And if you get 60% retention, that's considered very good. Now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my Facebook and I'm still seeing, you know, 170, 180 people um, watching live on Facebook and then, you know, on YouTube to other platforms. So that's exceptionally good news, which means that the, the, the clientele is there. It's really for us to deliver. The passion is there. So that's the good news. The bad news is that we are running out of time. We have, you know, um, four minutes in our scheduled time. Probably we'll extend a little bit um, so that all of you get enough time. So I want to ask you a question now. I will ask you to conclude and say, what would you like to do in terms of promoting science in Kerala? Would you like to do more webinars? Would you like to connect to more colleges or to more faculty? And what would you like the people who are listening to this do with reference to connecting with you or your topic? So I'll probably start with um, Suresh uh, as uh, usual. Suresh. Yeah, thanks, Mulajata. And uh, yeah, of course, I'm available. I have been doing a lot of webinars and uh, classes in the last uh, few years. So last one I gave was one with the SB College. Mm -hmm and also gave a lot of talks to international conferences uh, in India and in Kerala as well. So um, I'll be available and uh, like uh, look at the panel. So all are uh, ready to do, ready to. So uh, if you are organizing any seminars or anything, so contact uh, our admin and then uh, they can distribute the job to whoever is available. So this is a good platform. This is a growing platform. This is where um, we can get a multidisciplinary talent. We have engineers, scientists um, uh, working in different areas. So if you are organizing anything, we are ready to help. Thank you, Suresh. Before I go to Asha, and I have a question from um, Prash, you know, Father Prashant, who is asking, you know, is all of us, you know, as we proudly mentioned that we are product of the pub, you know, public education system in Kerala. What really, you know, prompted you to go to this upper orbit? You know, was it one teacher, one lecture, some relatives? So if, when you answer the question, if you could also say that personal spark, which helped you, that might also help some somebody else. So Asha. Oh, okay. So for me, um, yes, I had some very good teachers. I studied in a, uh, an aided school, Malayala medium. And I used to have a physics teacher. And in my 10th, uh, we used to study this, um, you know, atoms, electrons, and stuff. There was a chapter. And Apo, in the nuclear program, actually. Apo, I was in the class of Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research. I was in the class of Indira Gandhi Center fast breeder test reactor in Dakia Rajamana number. Are they the number of the on fuel uh, at some point? Uh, number of the non fuel uh, thorium, other pinna uh, and our efficient carina, we don't fuel enriched uh, fuel in Dagana uh, technology. Okay, I'm not going to details, but yes, I had a teacher 
a physics teacher who used to teach very well and uh, uh, also encouraged me to take part in quiz competitions and stuff. And also Parishad, Shastra Sahitya Parishad used to come to our school, uh, conducting Vijnana also and all these things. Uh, school education public school education over the years deteriorate inspiration many factors actually not only really a single thing um, yes so finally yeah, i went to that institute to do my phd i never thought about it when i was studying in 10th yeah thank you, thank you. Um, maybe I'll now go, you know, change the sequence and ask Dilip um, to give any personal reflection, but also what you would like uh, to offer to the those who are watching. Yeah, I would like to uh, contribute. Uh, yeah, uh, like promoting um, yeah, scientific temper first of all, and also for this uh, venture, uh, giving curated contents and other aspects. Uh, through webinars or, 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 or through direct contact and so on. So, yeah, I'll be able to contribute, uh, yeah, whatever I can. So I'm available through this uh, Education 21 seat. So, yeah, that's what I can offer, yeah. Thank you, Dilip. Anjana, any last words on your reflection or your offer? Thank you. Any teacher, a teacher or the most importantly, any color to wine dish. So, young and any chemistry reaction are compared to the color on down, color change on down, and any other chemistry interest and dialogue. In the do, or do the way I would do, or the way I would do, or the ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റ് <laughs> പിന്നെ ഇനി ഫ്യൂച്ചറിൽ എങ്ങനെയാണ് എന്താ പറയാ നമുക്ക് കൂടുതലായിട്ട് നമ്മുടെ സ്റ്റുഡൻസിനെ ഹെൽപ്പ് ചെയ്യുക അല്ലെങ്കിൽ പുതിയതായിട്ട് എന്ത് ചെയ്യാൻ കഴിയും എന്ന് ചോദിച്ചാൽ എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നു നമ്മളിപ്പോൾ ഓൾറെഡി ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ആ ക്യൂറേറ്റഡ് കണ്ടൻസ് കൂടുതൽ വിഷയങ്ങളിൽ നമുക്ക് കുറച്ചുകൂടെ നല്ല രീതിയിൽ സ്റ്റുഡൻസിനെയും അതുപോലെ ടീച്ചേഴ്സിനെയും ഹെൽപ്പ് ചെയ്യുന്ന രീതിയിൽ നല്ല അതായത് വേൾഡ് ക്ലാസ് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ എല്ലാവർക്കും ആക്സസബിൾ ആകുന്ന രീതിയിൽ കുറച്ച് കണ്ടന്റ് നല്ല രീതിയിൽ ക്യൂറേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുക വെബ്സൈറ്റ് നല്ല രീതിയിൽ ഡെവലപ്പ് ചെയ്തെടുക്കുക അതായിരിക്കും Thank you, Anjana, for all your work, intellectual as well as practical. You know, Najib, I am coming to you as the last uh, person in the, you know, you're having the last word, so to say. You know, because what I was really um, you know, motivated in your case was that you were, you know, working in a fairly senior level um, in an Indian refinery. You know, Indian refinery jobs are supposed to be the, the best, huh? like the candies there are the finest. You know, you have, you know, it was one, and I, I once went to an Indian oil corporation canteen and then I said, this is where I want to work, you know. Mm -hmm. So what really then prompted you to quit that job? It's, I think everyone would have told you you're stupid and then study, you know, continue higher study in, you know, in science, you know, which is not that lucrative, you know, compared to um, continuing in an Indian refinery. Uh, yeah, that's that's a real great question. Actually, I yeah I was working at Indian Oil Corporation, having a great job. I uh, was in technical services, uh, doing uh, mostly you know engineering related stuff. But I was always interested in research, and and you know and push the boundary of you know and you know like a little bit of pushing the boundary or, or pushing outside of your comfort zone. I always wanted to do that. Even today, I do that. So. Indian oil job wasn't giving me that kind of a satisfaction. Uh, when I asked who I am, am I that kind of a person like doing just technical services and uh, helping people? It's not a bad job, but then I wanted to do more, more research. Uh, I, I, all, I was always fascinated by science. That, that's, a, that's a thing like, I, of course I'm a passionate engineer, but at the same time, I was always, always passionate about science too. So I wanted to pursue science 
And then the turning point was I got a scholarship to go to England. I didn't have to spend a dollar or, or a pound to, to study in England. And then, uh, you know, I did my master's. And then, for, as Asha said, full scholarship for PhD. So I didn't have to spend a dollar on my, my higher education. But then to leave that job and, and, and taking that, that step, as Murlidan said, was, was a big deal for me. I had to really push hard and convince a lot of people. People told me that, oh, how are you going to manage? So it, it was really, um, you know, a, a kind of a quantum jump, uh, no pun intended. Um, so um, to, to conclude, I have a couple things to request actually, you know, here our, our, our idea here is to, to form, uh, to build, a, a, you know, a scientific ecosystem in, in Kerala, you know, where we can, we can actually contribute to the, um, to the higher education system. At the same time, you know, so all of you, I, I encourage and, and I request you to be part of these, these kind of an ecosystem and, and have that kind of interaction with, among ourselves. So that's an important thing. And I would request the, the Department of Higher Education and, and, and um, the government of Kerala also, you know, you know, as I said, we don't have immense resources to do all this. Our resources are very, very limited. That's a fact, right? So to have a strategy session, and what is, what is a strategy actually? When I mean, you can do 100 things, you, obviously we cannot do it. So forming a strategy to, to, to develop, you know, what exactly, what are the five things we can do really well? That's, that's forming a strategy. So form a strategy and understand where we have the best bang for the buck, right? So if you're spending some money, where do we spend it? If you're uh, using some people, where do we use it? So that come up with a, that kind of a strategy. Uh, that's an extremely important point for the, for the government because we don't have immense resources. So uh, that's my request to the, to the government and, and, and the department. Come up with an excellent strategy and we, we can all help with that, that strategy work, work because uh, in industry, I have done a lot of, uh, you know, strategy uh, work, those kind of things, and, and many of us. So uh, that, that's my request. Uh, with that request, I, I conclude my remarks. Thank you, uh, Najib. Uh, you know, once again, very you know, inspiring um, case. And I encourage some of you who are really passionate about science to leave the comfort zone where you are in, you know, be it in government job, be, be it in, you know, Indian Oil Corporation and, and jump. You know, there is some, you know, pleasure in, in you know, jumping to the uncertain. Um, I had promised that uh, not only the session will start on time, but we'll also conclude in time, but we are seven minutes behind. But as I said, we have 90% retention at this point of time, which, which I'm extremely delighted. And that's primarily showing um, the interest of the people, but also the um, what the panel is right now contributing. So I want to thank all those who have stayed behind and all those who joined for the session. Um, all those who registered in advance would get a feedback form by email. A feedback form is also pinned to the uh, YouTube, etc. So please fill the form so that you can receive the certificate. And as I said, please feel free to connect to any one of us. Now, I, I'm expecting like you know, 100 LinkedIn requests in the next 24 hours and more. I'm just saying 100 as a, as a bottom level because clearly you need to connect with other people. The, the future is about mm -hmm. connecting. I want to thank those who are not visible to you, um, such as uh, Dr. Jijo, who has been the you know, most instrumental in keeping all the back end, Sunish of Edumitra, Rajiv, who is staying with us. And um, you know, we will continue to have more such sessions. And all those people whom you are not seeing will be visible in next and, and subsequent sessions. And uh, with those words, I thank all the participants. Um, all the speakers and all those who work behind and Prashant and the Tevra College, uh, Dean Jinu. And, you know, as always, there will be someone whom I did not mention. So all those whom I did not mention, I can only say I'm very thankful. Uh, we are running two minutes, uh, nine minutes behind the schedule, but I think it was worth to all of you. Thank you very much indeed.
bye bye thank you so bye. much so sunesh if you could end the live and let us know okay let me check on my phone yes sir yana idu end yirunnu karan oru cheri lag undavulo conversation yeah yeah no problem